Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm Isaac Porter and this is your update in ophthalmology and eye care coming right here from Raleigh. And in this episode I would like to explain ectasia after LASIK or PRK. Uh, this is a problem where the cornea thins and bulges and can distort shape. So as you remember the cornea, the clear shield that covers over the front of the eye is where we perform LASIK by thinning the cornea some to include the power from glasses or contact lenses onto the eye. Now with this procedure, when the cornea is thinned, in some rare cases, it can be weakened to the point where it can no longer be stable moving forward. This is what we call corneal ectasia, and it's similar that we see when people have keratoconus, where their cornea thins and progressively changes shape. And it's a complication that we hope to avoid at all costs during LASIK surgery. So by identifying risk factors, we've been better able to find out who may be susceptible to this and we're able to exclude them from having LASIK surgery. We've learned a lot by looking at corneal topography or the maps that we take of the cornea that show us the shape and elevation of the front surface of the eye. With this, we're able to exclude some people that their topography does not qualify for LASIK and hopefully avoid the complication. Also, we do precise calculations measuring this thickness that will be remaining in the back layers of the cornea after the surgery. With the laser, the minimum thickness is 250 microns that is one quarter of a millimeter and many times surgeons will want to go for a little bit safer margin of 300 microns remaining. Also we found that younger patients could be more susceptible particularly people under age 22 and then also people with thinner corneas to begin with. Average thickness for a cornea is around 540 microns but it looks like maybe people that start with corneas of 510 microns or less could be more at risk than others. Uh, also people that need a large treatment that are very nearsighted uh, could have higher risk. These are people that may be minus eight or even more nearsighted than that. And then other risk factors may play in, like if people have keratoconus or a history of eye problems in their family, although they may have no signs of it themselves. So if unfortunately someone does develop Ectasia, there is treatments that we can give. Uh, we may need to correct the vision with a rigid contact lens, or we could use collagen cross-linking to help stiffen the cornea. You can see more details about that in our previous episode of A State of Sight. And then rarely this could lead to distortion enough where it may require a corneal transplant. So as you can tell, we want to avoid this at all costs and we've been better using these screening methods to help put together a risk profile to see who may be the ones most at risk. So if you have any questions about ectasia after LASIK or any complications from laser cataract, or excuse me, LASIK surgery, uh, we'd be happy to interact with you and we'll hope to see you again soon next time on A State of Sight.